Let's continue our introduction to vex and vops by looking at if statements. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. So if you want it, you can grab it there. But the if statements is something that I haven't actually touched on yet. And it's something that I think is super important to touch on early in the series, because it's something that you're probably going to be using quite a bit, something that I use all the time. I pretty much only do it inside Vex. I don't really ever do it inside of Ops just because it's a little bit more tedious to set up, I would say, um, but it is something that is super useful to know. So we'll cover both just so that anybody that is using Vops knows how it all works, but I would just recommend doing it inside of Vex because it's a lot quicker to set up. So let's just drop down a box just for demonstration purposes here. And I'm gonna increase the subdivisions here to a value of five. So that we have one sitting on the origin. So let's start off with Vex as usual. So we'll drop down an attribute wrangle and let's go ahead and press Alt and E and pop this out. Make this just a little bit bigger and we'll also zoom in here. So let's go ahead and just affect everything that is below the origin. So where let's type in if, and then we have our ability to set kind of whatever we want inside of this parentheses. So we're going to set our comparison. So in this case, we're going to do at p dot y, and we'll do we'll make that less than zero. And then we need a little bracket, and then we'll press enter a couple times and do another bracket. So everything between these two brackets is going to be basically what you want to happen. And then you can also expand on this and do an else statement uh, if you would like, but let's go ahead and just set something up in here. So let's say we want to just flatten everything to the origin if it is below the, well, below the origin. So we'll do at p dot y and we'll set that equal to zero. And now you can see that we have everything below the origin is basically just being pushed up to zero in the Y. And we can do an, an else statement as well. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll do our brackets. And then let's just say maybe at P dot Y is equal to, we'll do, we'll do plus equals to one. And then that's just gonna stretch everything up one unit. So it's really not anything that is too difficult, uh, but it's something that you're going to be using a lot of time, a lot uh, just to compare some different things and just to create some, some different things. So we could also set the, like the color. So, well, let's make a copy of this real quick, just to show. We'll pop this out. And let's just change this to at CD is equal to, and we'll do set. We need to set the values. So we'll do, maybe we'll set it to red if it is below the, or sorry, not red, but green if it is below the origin. And then if it is above the origin, then we will do the same thing, except for this time, let's set it to maybe red. And now you can see that everything below the origin is going to have this this color and we can change this to an equal sign as well. And now we get anything that is above or at the origin or below. I mean, so let's go ahead and just accept those changes and let's go ahead and drop down our point VOP. And let's just take this and we'll dive inside. And this is a little bit more complex to set up. So we need to, first, if we're going to do the comparison for the position, we'll need to do a vector to float. We'll wire in our position. And then from there, we need to drop down a compare node. And the reason for this is because the next step is the if block. So this if block has a couple of inputs here. So it has this condition in, which it then has a condition out. And then we have a next in and a next in on our block begin and block end. So let's just wire in our Y into the first input of our compare. 
and let's do anything that is uh, less than or equal to, or let's do just less than uh, zero. And then we'll wire that bool into the condition. And then let's give ourselves just a little bit more space here. And let's wire in our position. Let's do actually our, um, we can do, yeah, let's just do our Y position. And then we'll just convert it back to a float after. So inside our block begin, we need to drop down a switch node. And what this is going to do is it's going to take our condition that we have here. So anything that's lower than zero in the Y, and it's going to output a result and we'll wire that into our, our block end. So we'll take our variable one in and we'll wire that into our input. And let's drop down a constant. And it's already set up for a float, which is what we need. And let's set that equal or in as our second input for our switch. So it's going to switch between these two values depending on what this compare node gives us. So let's do a float to vector. And we'll wire in our value into the Y. And then we also need to wire in our previous position values for the X and the Z. And we'll wire that into our P. And now you can see that it is flattening everything out. Now, you may be asking why we are using this variable one input. Why don't we just wire this directly into our switch? And well, we can do that. And in this case, it looks like it's not giving us any issues, but I have seen it give some issues in the past. So sometimes this doesn't wanna work very well. Um, so it looks like it's not giving the issue now, but just be aware that sometimes this does give issues and it'll like in this case, it would just flatten. I've seen it just flatten everything to zero. So just be aware of that. Uh, but I would just recommend using that variable one input um, as your input uh, for or as your first input. That way, it it doesn't seem to give any issues, at least from from what I've experienced. So that is kind of the the gist of it for Vops. Um, and again, we could change this. Let's just make another one of these, and we'll do the color just to show. And we don't need this float to vector and we don't need to wire this in here. Let's just cut some of those wires. Let's wire in our color into our variable one in. And we'll set this back to our input two. And let's come down and make this a color and then we can wire this color into the color there. And now we can you know, change this to red or whatever we want. And we could change our compare node as well to be greater than or equal or less than or equal to so that anything below the origin is going to, or below or equal to the origin is gonna be red. So that's just a quick overview of the if statements inside of Vops and Vex. I would definitely recommend just doing it inside of Vex. I, I don't really like uh, the way that it works inside of Vops. It's a little finicky and weird, whereas the if statement inside of Vex is super easy to do. And just to point out here, if you don't want to set anything in this else statement, you don't have to. So I can just completely remove this and it's just gonna keep whatever value that it had set before. So if you don't wanna change anything, you don't have to. I know that a lot of coders will probably frown on not putting an else statement in there, but personally, I think it's irrelevant if you just want to uh, keep the values the same. So, and you can use this to do kind of whatever you want. You can check any sort of value. So if you wanted to check maybe like uh, the distance, if you use the distance function, then you could check that. Uh, you can check a mask value, you know, whatever you want, you can, you can use as this input for the inside of the parentheses there to your, your comparison statement. So. That is a quick overview of the if statements. I use them all the time. Um, it's kind of up to you, whichever one you want to go with, whether it's in Vex or Vops. But personally, I think it's just a lot quicker and easier to do inside of Vex. But use whatever you want now that you know how they both work. 
Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.